Hey guys, it's um, Sam for Digital Meat. Um, <clears throat> I just want to say sorry if I sound a little bit uh, under the weather. Uh, I've not been very well for the um, last couple of days. But I was so excited by uh, the new features in Cinema 4D R19 that I couldn't wait to um, share them with you. So let's have a look at what's new in Cinema 4D R19. Okay, first of all, we've got a viewport enhancements and a PBR workflow. So if you don't know, PBR stands for physically based rendering. It means that we can get results that are more accurate in the, in the viewport. Uh, because of this new workflow, Cinema 4D has a new PBR material and uh, PBR lights as well. Um, so basically how it works is after creating the PBR material, the reflectance channel is used to handle most of the things you'll find um, in a PBR material. Uh, in the default diffuse layer, the layer color attribute can be used as the albedo channel and the reflection will be dealt with inside the default reflection layer. Here you can control roughness as well as the index of reflect, uh, reflect, refraction even, so that type of thing. Um, there's full support for 16 layers in the reflection channel, which allows for material mixing and masking between layers. This looks absolutely awesome. There's also full support for bump and normal channels as well. I'm really hoping there's a way for these materials to be translated on export uh, to a game engine, say like Unity. Then we only have to author and set up the values to a material once, but um, we'll see. Uh, the lighting in the scene comes from a default environment, but this can easily be changed by adding a sky object and giving it a new material with a HDR. Uh, then you can rotate the sky to change the direction of lighting. It's incredible that all of this is uh, happening inside the viewport in real time. Um, it looks absolutely amazing. Uh, we've also got a new light type called a P PBR light. It means setting up uh, PBR lights in a scene gives an accurate preview of diffuse lighting and reflections without having to make preview renders. So you can see how iteration would be really, really quick there. Um, okay, viewport depth of field. Now this is a big one for me. Uh, now in Cinema 4D R19, we can see our depth of field in the viewport. No more rendering to see if we've got the desired result. Um, it works as it did before. You can use the pick focus tool or select a focus object. Um, we've even got real-time Bokai effects, which, again, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It will really speed up um, workflow. Uh, screen space reflections. Um, Previously in Cinema 4D R18, we'd been relying on the default environment or a sky object for all of the reflections, which is great. But the illusion is shattered when we have an object sitting on a reflective surface. Now, with local screen space reflections, this problem has been completely overcome. So we get contact reflections. Um, it gives a lot more realism to the scene. Um, absolutely incredible. Uh, so you can see how the viewport enhancements have made iteration really, really good. And the PBR workflow, it looks absolutely amazing. Um, uh, all of these viewport enhancements carry over, to, uh, carry over to the OpenGL renderer, which means quicker previews for clients. So we can render out what we're seeing in the viewport with the, um, with the renderer. Uh, it also includes a new super sampling option, which can be far superior to the standard anti-aliasing. So, you know, all is good when it comes to our viewport enhancements and the PBR workflow from directly inside Cinema 4D. Absolutely amazing. Um, another new feature. We've got a uh, LOD object now, so we can take advantage of a technique that game engines typically use but inside the Cinema 4D viewport. We can now use level of detail on high poly models based on camera distance or screen size of the object. So the further away we are from an object, the lower the resolution of that object is. Um, uh, this keeps the viewport frame rate stable and high, which means timing animation is easier because the frame rate in the viewport is more accurate. 
Uh, we've also got a um, reconstruction tab in the motion tracker. So now in Cinema 4D R19, you can reconstruct a scene using just footage. Cinema 4D will create a point cloud, and from that cloud we can generate geometry. This can be used for all kinds of effects, from scans to LiDAR, that kind of thing. Um, so again, even if you're not going to end up using that geometry, it's a good uh, sort of placeholder, so you can get a you can get a grip on where that object should actually exist in the scene. So again, brilliant. Um, Cinema 4D R19 also has a new media core, which includes the following features. It's now got native support for MP4 video. Thank you, God. Um, so basically that means Windows users don't have to have QuickTime installed, thank Christ, because I hate having that on my computer. Um, <laughs> it also means that playback for MP4 in the interface is much, much faster and reliable. Uh, I know myself that in the past I'd had to convert MP4s into a JPEG sequence just so the motion tracker didn't choke on its own nuts. And uh, now, fingers crossed, that's not necessary. Um, these improvements carry over to the renderer, meaning that MP4 export gives us more options and more control. You can even save custom MP4 export presets. So you could have one for preview, one for final render or whatever. I, I typically render out an um, image sequence. So, uh, you know, if you get a crash or anything like that, which is pretty much, I mean, I don't really get that in Cinema 4D, but um, it means you haven't lost everything. But for... Uh, for previews to send to clients, you can see how, you know, MP4 exports would be absolutely brilliant. Um, as we all know, the picture viewer is also a media player. These improvements mean that playing MP4 back in the picture viewer at a high resolution is a complete doddle for Cinema 4D R19. Um, there's tons of new options for different media types. Uh, good examples of this, the DDS format and the new options for Open EXR as well. It's important to note that Cinema 4D supports uh, fractional frame rates for all the media formats now. Hallelujah. Um, and on a side note, uh, GIFs. And yes, I do pronounce it GIF. I don't call my GPU a graphics card, do I? So, yeah, I'm saying GIF. Um, you can now load animated GIFs as textures in R19. So, brilliant. I mean... The uh, new media core sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, also, we have a new spherical camera in Cinema 4D, R19. Uh, now we can render 360 degree stereo VR images natively inside Cinema 4D using the spherical camera. Um, this can be done uh, using the new spherical tab that has been added to the camera. With any camera that's that has already been animated we can just go into the spherical tab and click the enable checkbox <laughs> brilliant um, cinema 4d also supports several different mapping formats lat long uh, cube map cross cube map 3 by 2 which is uh, I think it's used by Facebook and uh, cube map string when rendering spherical images for VR, we need to render in stereo. This is handled in the stereo tab, which updates automatically when the uh, when spherical rendering is um, being used. There are tons of options here, including eye separation distance, eye to neck distance, which is really good. We can even enable pole smoothing, which reduces uh, the distortion at the poles. We can even render um, chosen ranges of a spherical view and see that range using the uh, new uh, field of view helper okay the Veronoi fracture object uh, this has had a massive update um, now it's possible to have connections between fragments that can be broken when they meet a specific force threshold this means we can have multi-step destru uh, destruction simulations the force threshold and torque threshold can be altered to give us lots of different results we can even use different um, connector types um, which you can imagine would you know gives us even more result types on top of that sweet sweet new dynamic stuff there's um, we can even connect multiple objects that are in close proximity if they are inside the Veronoi fracture object um, 
we can even do splinters now. So now in Cinema 4D R19, we can actually control what kind of fracture we get by using the new scale cells feature. This means it's really easy to create, create something like splintered wood. Um, we also have geometry glue, another new feature of R19. It, uh, this means that we can do things like take our already fractured objects and cluster regions of it together. Um, so you can see how the surfaces will, will change like that. Uh, sorting. We can now uh, change the index of each fragment, which means we can have much more control over the animation and movement of each fragment piece, which is really, really good. In the object tab, we have um, some extra options for thickness and invert. This opens the door to a whole new range of possibilities, such as complex hollow structures and bizarre abstract shapes. Um, I actually got asked a question uh, uh, through my Facebook page a, uh, a uh, little while ago by someone that was saying that the Voronoi fracture, the, the edges of the fragments didn't seem too uniform. And um, it'd be good if noise could be added to, to the fragments. Now that's a possibility, so we can add a lot more... Um, less uniform shapes to it and we can also add noise and stuff to the inside of the fractures so it gives it a lot more of a natural look and result um, <clears throat> we've also got a new polygon reduction object it's had a massive facelift in r19 it now has a pre-processing stage that allows for the for the new features in it uh, the amount of polygon reduction can be controlled by the reduction strength slider or by inputting the desired poly count or vertex count uh, this new reduction method also maintains UVs. Brilliant. That is, you know, that's what I wanted out of that. So we we now uh, maintain UVs. It also maintains vertex maps and does its best to um, maintain poly selections as well. We can even preserve 3D boundaries as reduction takes place and UV boundaries to make sure UV islands are also maintained. Uh, the sound effector. Uh, the sound effector in R19 has been massively improved. There, there's so much going on here, I don't know where to start, to be honest. Um, thanks to Cinema 4D R19's new media core, most audio formats are now supported, whether that be MP3, um, you name it. Uh, thanks to the new probes in the sound effector, it's now easier than ever to affect MoGraph's objects based on frequency and specific range. It's a lot more visual as well, um, which is great. Uh, I mean, looking at these results, they it's just amazing the results that you can um, you can get out of this now. Uh, and moving on to the big boy, the big big boy, Pro Render. Pro Render by AMD has now been integrated into Cinema 4D R19. Uh, Pro Render is an unbiased path tracer that runs on the CPU and GPU. It's also written with OpenCL, which means both Macs and PCs are supported. Uh, Pro Render offers a preview panel that allows you to change lighting and materials and see the results on the fly. Uh, <laughs> Pro Render also it works with Cinema 4D materials and even locks off options in lighter materials to guide users to more realistic results without overwhelming them with options that aren't even available. So um, you can see how that would be massively handy. Uh, most of the standard Cinema 4D shaders are supported and those that aren't, like procedural noises, are automatically baked into 2D textures. So, you know, it really seems like they've thought about this. Um, it looks really, really good. Uh, the render settings seem to be very simple and have been separated out so you can control the settings for the preview window and uh, for quick iteration and the final render so that you can do that separately. There's a Firefly filter which eliminates stray bright pixels. Um, anyone that's worked with GPU rendering in the past will know exactly what I'm talking about there. Um, you know, you've got a lovely, lovely picture and then there's just like this horrible pixel sat in the middle of it. Um, so that that's good. We'll have to um, see how that, uh, what the performance of that is like. We've also got control over how rendering occurs. So we have an iteration count, which means we can pick the number of iterations before the render stops. We've got a time limit in seconds, so it would just run until it hits that time limit. Uh, we've got an error threshold, which means that the render will iterate until that threshold is met. Um, or we've got never, 
um, so it will just keep iterating but you can also set a maximum iteration count so you know it doesn't go on forever uh, pro render also supports multiple gpus which can be turned on and off uh, for both uh, production and preview renders so from what i can see so far cinema 4d shaping up to be it looks brilliant it looks absolutely brilliant um, the viewport stuff is absolutely amazing um, to get that level of result back. I mean, even with the pro render, we get a preview, you know, we've got our preview r render window, which is brilliant. But to be honest with the viewport enhancements, I think that you're going to get a pretty accurate preview, preview from just working in the viewport. It looks absolutely amazing. You know, when you lob all the depth of field stuff on top and the screen space reflections, um, it's pretty much the kind of, um, you know, the, the kind of thing that you'd find in a, a game engine window when you're working in a game engine. All these sort of post-processing effects, um, you know, they're now in Cinema 4D. And uh, it's amazing. It looks absolutely amazing. Um, and really excited about the VR stuff, um, the spherical camera. Uh, to be able to render out, uh, you know, stereoscopic 360 videos natively from within cinema. Um, that looks really, really good. Uh, so in conclusion, then, I suppose, uh, I need this in my life right to this second, please. Um, <laughs> yeah, it looks great. Anyway, I'm sure there's some features that I've um, missed or overlooked or whatever, but as I... Uh, as I find out what those are, I'll update you guys. But I just wanted you to see what um, what's coming for Cinema 4D R19. Um, so as always, you can follow me on uh, Facebook, uh, social media, so Facebook and Twitter and Google+. Um, and also, if you've uh, enjoyed my video or any other video, uh, consider having a look at my Patreon page. Okay, guys, I'm going back to bed now. I'll... Um, I'll see you uh I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.